Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. You know, yesterday, since it was warm, we decided, um, uh, Beth and I, I was more grudgingly going, but we decided to go for a walk and go to the park. I should have had a better attitude, but I, to be honest, didn't want to go, and I really wanted to watch NFL football playoffs, just to be honest. And uh, so anyway, I was like, all right, fine, we'll go to the park. And, you know, Jane started walking. We, we were all kind of walking. She had, this, she had this old McDonald's burger that we had gotten earlier in the day that, like, had, you know, when a kid holds something for a long time, it, it starts to, like, lose its look and shape and value, you know. Um, and so she's holding this burger. We go to the park, and, you know, every, like, couple of minutes, she'd, like, make one of us hold it. And I'm telling you, it was kind of gross. But anyway, she'd keep eating it and keep walking. We get to the park. We're playing in the park. As we're about to go home, uh, Beth's like, hey, Jane, do you want uh, to keep this burger? Like, do you want it? Jane's like, no, I don't, I'm good. I don't need it anymore. And then she throws it out, and then, and then I open my mouth. I shouldn't have. You know, I said something I shouldn't have said. And I said, Jane, are you sure you don't want that burger right after Beth had thrown it in the garbage? And Jane goes, oh, yeah, I do want it. And so she starts screaming and trying to climb into the garbage can. This was yesterday, like yesterday afternoon, true story. And I'm like, actually, now I feel bad. Beth's, Beth, Beth feet looks bad, right? Like, I feel bad. It's my fault, but, you know, Beth feels bad. And then I'm telling you, getting her away from that garbage can was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life. Because she wanted her old garbage burger literally so badly and then we started walking home and every like literally every like 30 seconds she just starts screaming and crying like I want my burger I want my burger I want my burger and I was like I don't know if you're ever going to forgive us for this moment we're like we'll take you home we're offering it we're like you want ice cream do you want like chips like do you want candy she's like I want my burger and I'm like will you ever learn to forgive us for this moment you know, and I was, I was thinking about this, this yesterday as I was kind of in this moment. I was thinking about the, the next verse we're going to be going through in the Lord's Prayer. And the verse that we're going to be going through uh, is, uh, is, is Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. And it says this, And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. Right? You know, this part of the Lord's Prayer. And I remember again yesterday being like, ah. I've sinned against Jane, you know what I mean? Like, I've, I've forced th this to be a bad situation. And, you know, when it comes to forgiveness in our life, I think it's something that brings a lot of different emotions for all of us. I think we all have a different uh, history. We have a different story when it comes to forgiveness in our life. I think each and every single one of us, we've all been very hurt in the past. I don't think anyone can put their hand up and say, I've never been hurt before. It's like... Teach me how to do that, you know what I mean? But we all have things. And for a lot of us, when we look back, back at our past, our past is filled with moments, filled with things that are filled with regret, as well as filled with moments where we, where we were hurt really badly. Each and every one of us, we have all these moments. And forgiveness, as much as we know we're supposed to do, I think as believers, as followers of Jesus, I think sometimes forgiveness is one of the hardest things for us to actually live out. It's so hard for us to look at somebody who's hurt us in sometimes really deep and profound ways to look at them and look at them with love and not hate. I think sometimes it's really hard for us to have moments where we step into deep forgiveness for people who have hurt us in deep and real ways. And as we read this verse, it's so interesting because, again, it comes in the middle of the Lord's Prayer, which is the series we've been going through. And this is, you know, the... The, the, the verse 12, again, forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. And I, I have two things that come out of this verse, directly out of this verse, that I think are really important for us. And why we pray, forgive us as we forgive. Why do we pray this? Why is it important for us? And so the first part to this, when you can look at forgiveness, you know, forgive us, is really that word, those words, forgive us, right? That's the first step. If we want to look at what Jesus is teaching us to pray, he's praying, forgive us. And what I find so interesting about Jesus is that Jesus didn't have to pray that prayer, right? If you look at his life, you look at, his, at everything he went through, he didn't actually have to pray, forgive us. Yet when he teaches us to pray, he says, pray, forgive us. And I find that so interesting that Jesus teaches us this part of forgive us because Jesus never sinned. 
right? That's, he never stepped into a place where he had to be forgiven because he always followed what God was teaching. He always, always followed the commandments. So he went and followed it and said he teaches us to pray, forgive us. But I think it's so interesting because Jesus teaches it. And then if you remember when Jesus is hanging on the cross, this is what he says. In Luke chapter 23, verse 34, he says this. He prays it a little differently. He says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. See, when Jesus prays, because we pray, Father, forgive us, Jesus prays, Father, forgive them. It's very interesting that Jesus, he's hanging on the cross and he's seeing everything happening around him. He's in the most painful moment a human could go through of torture and humiliation. Yet on his lips, on his mind, is you and I. On his mind is the people who are in the middle of gambling for his clothing. And his lips come out, forgive them. I know for me, when I'm in a moment where I'm being hurt in a real way, the first thing I say is usually not forgive them. It's usually not, I forgive you. It's like, I'm going to retaliate, right? I'm going to show you that I'm strong. I'm going to show you that I can do it. I'm going to prove to you that I'm strong. But Jesus' lips, his mouth says, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. And since Jesus sinned, he never did anything wrong. Yet he was taking the pain of humanity on his shoulder, and he prayed, forgive them. Again, he's on the cross in the most pain a human could endure, and his focus is still on the people. Still trying to bring people and carry people with him when he goes to heaven. He's still trying to share the good news, and his eyes are on us in this moment. Forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And I think for a lot of us, when we look at our lives, there's so many things that we're ignorant of. There's a lot of things that we do that we don't even realize is hurting other people. I think this is the reality for all of us. We all have things in our life, maybe blind spots or things about us that we're hurting people and we're not intentionally doing it. And Jesus says they don't even know the sin they're causing. They don't even know the pain they're causing. They don't even understand the fullness of what's happening, but God, forgive them. And I'm so grateful that Jesus prays that prayer. Because I think he's praying that prayer, obviously, in that moment, but I also think Jesus is praying that prayer, forgive them, as he continues to pray for us as well, as he continues to have us on his mind, as he continues to have us on his heart. His eyes are on us. And in Romans 8, 34, this came out, this verse came out in our prayer and fast this week. But it says this in Romans 8, 34, who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. He is sitting at the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. In other translations, you this word, interceding for us. So Jesus is up in the place of honor and still on his mind as he's, he's pleading and interceding and talking about us to the Father. And he's, he's in this conversation talking to the Father about us, pleading for us. Pleading for us because of all the things that we've done and all the things that we do that are hurting people, that are causing pain, that we're, we're causing all these problems that Jesus is still pleading for us in heaven. I know intercession is really is saying a prayer or talking to God on behalf of someone else, right? Interceding is, is saying a prayer kind of on behalf of somebody else. And so Jesus, he's up there. He's saying a prayer on behalf of us, for us, to the Father. You know, the enemy, if you look at the enemy, he's going around. He's just accusing us of everything that we've done wrong, Right? Every single thing that I've said, every single thing I've done that's wrong, he's accusing us to the Father every, every time. And a lot of the time when we view what this looks like, a lot of the time we look, visualize this as a courtroom, right? We see us as the guilty. We see God the Father as the judge. And we see, we see the, the enemy as our accuser. And then we see Jesus standing with us. We see this as a courtroom, and, and what this looks like is that we're, we're the ones who are charged. We're the ones who are the thief. We're the ones who, who are the murderer. That's who we are, and the reality is we're guilty of it. The reality is when we look at this, when we look at this, we're guilty, and so we deserve the punishment. We deserve the punishment of death, yet Jesus is standing, talking to the Father, while the enemy is accusing us, saying, no, I, I love them. They are, they are good. I will go instead of them. I will take the punishment instead of them, and that's what Jesus does for us. 
He looks at us and says, I'm going to go instead of you so that way you can live a life to the full, so that way you can have conversation and interaction with the Father. I will go instead of you to take the punishment. He's the one talking to the Father. He's saying, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And I'm just so grateful in my life that this is what Jesus does for me. Because I think all of us, again, in our lives, we can look back and remember all the moments as parents where we did things that we regret. All the moments we can look back on and the times we stole something or we cheated something. We all have things we look back on with deep regret. All of us. This regret is something that we wish wasn't a part of the human story. And as I've done research, they say that the top two emotions people feel, number one is love, and then number two is regret. So the second emotion that people feel negative is regret. And so we have to realize that we have so much in our life that we are so guilty of, so many things that we've done wrong, yet Jesus talks to the Father pleading for us, saying, I'm gonna go instead of them so that we can find freedom. When we pray, forgive us. When we pray, forgive us, we're saying, God, I'm broken and I desperately need a savior. I desperately need somebody to come in my life. I desperately need it. We say, forgive me for everything that I've done wrong to hurt other people, to hurt you, to hurt myself. Forgive me. And why we pray this prayer it's because I think every single day this is a prayer we probably need to pray, right? We all have times where we're driving down the road. People, something about people, they just, if it's not you, they don't drive well, right? Like I'm the best driver in the city and you are as well, unless you cut me off. And then you're the worst driver in the city, right? Every day we have things that we do to hurt other people. And so why we go to the Father, we say, Father, forgive me, forgive me. Sometimes we might not even know the things that we've done wrong, yet we still go to him and say, Father, forgive me. And then I think as we move on to the second part of this prayer, I think this is the hardest part. I think sometimes it's easy to accept God's forgiveness. We're like, you know, I'm gonna do this, but yeah, God's gonna welcome me and accept me and forgive me anyways. But the second part says, forgive us as we forgive. I think that, that, that word as is so important and so key because he says, forgive us as I forgive other people. As I forgive other people. You know, right after Jesus teaches us to pray, you know, in, in, in Matthew 6, and then he goes into, after the prayer, it goes into this, verse 14. So this is, he emphasizes this part of the prayer. He says this, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Jesus said it twice. In fact, three times. Forgive us as we forgive. And then he says, forgive our trespasses and then our father will forgive you. But if you don't forgive, he will not forgive you. That's what it says. Now what this is saying, this is not saying that our salvation is based off forgiving people. That's not what this is saying. Because in Romans 10, 9, it says, if you, op if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and that believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is not a salvation issue. This isn't that issue. But what it is teaching us is that our relationship with God will be damaged if we accept his forgiveness and don't offer the same to other people. We're not gonna have the fullness of who God is unless we're willing to actually pour out the love and forgiveness that he showed me. If anyone needs God's forgiveness, it's me. And so my responsibility when I'm forgiven is to actually walk in that same forgiveness. I can, I, you know, most of us are never going to be in a place where Jesus was hanging on a cross, watching people torture him and saying, forgive them. Most of us are never going to be in a moment like that. But for a lot of us, our forgiveness goes for decades and decades or days and days, weeks and weeks. And we hold on to it and it's poisoning our relationships. It's poisoning our relationship with Jesus. It's poisoning our relationship because we're not willing to pour out the same forgiveness. And Jesus was tortured. I think a lot of us, we've been hurt so badly. I think a lot of us, when we look back at our past, we see so much trauma and so much abuse and so much pain. And when we look back, there's not a lot of joy that we can see in our past. And so what's happening for a lot of us is we're living in this place where our past is defining or creating our future. 
We're letting, we're letting fear and we're letting forgiveness overtake our unforgiveness, overtake our lives. That we're never actually getting the fullness of who God is. We're never actually getting the fullness of our relationships. Some of us were in families where we haven't talked to our parents in years. Some of us were in relationships where we haven't talked to our children in a very long time. Some of us were in a place where we we haven't talked to our best friends because something happened that was so small and insignificant, but it blew up and all of a sudden, relationship is broken. If we don't learn to forgive people, we're never going to have deep relationship. You know what they say? They say that you are going to hurt the people you love the most, the most. Right? The people you love the most, why? Because you're with them more. You're with them more. You know what's going to get under their skin. I know exactly what I can say and do to make Beth mad at me. I know. You probably know what's going to make your spouse really angry. Right? You, we know it. And still, sometimes we do it. If we cannot let forgiveness reign in our relationships, we're going to be left lonely, isolated, and alone. And some of us were going to say, and it's good, but we're going to say, but I still got Jesus, right? Which is amazing. But you're alone. If you read through scripture, there's moment after moment of people doing horrible things. Jesus encounters with them. And then he says, go into community. Go build relationship. We need to learn how to forgive each other better. And this is how C.S. Lewis said this. He said, to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. I think sometimes we're so good at forgiving or accepting God's forgiveness or something, but somebody has the exact same thing they've done to us, and we say, no, that's not for me. You know what Jesus went through on the cross? He went through a lot of things on the cross. He went through betrayal, right? His, his, one of his closest friends, Judas, betrayed him. He went through a place of loneliness where all his disciples just ran away. One ran away naked. That's how scared he was. He experienced humiliation. He experienced so many of the things that we experience from each other, yet was willing to forgive us for it. Willing to still go to the cross even though he knew everything we'd done. Still go. When as we go closer to Jesus, as we become more like Jesus, forgiveness will become a part of our DNA. The hurts will still come up. Uh, the, the hurts will still cut deep, but if we can sit in the middle of our deepest pain and extend a similar prayer to what Jesus prayed on the cross, can we get to a place where we can be in pain and say, I forgive you? Can we get to a moment like that? And in Matthew 18, 21, verse 22, I think this is so funny. This is Peter. Then Peter came to him, to Jesus, said, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Peter's like, I nailed it. He's like, this is a test, and I know the correct answer. It's multiple choice, but the answer is seven. Seven, number of completion. This is going to be amazing. Jesus is going to put me at the right hand beside him on the throne. He's going to give me everything I want. I know the answer. Seven times, right? Seven times is a lot of times to forgive somebody for the exact same thing. Some of us, we can't even forgive someone one time. So Peter's like, seven times in one day? Am I willing to forgive him seven times? He's like, I could do seven. And then, of course, we know the answer Jesus gives. He's like, Peter, you need to get better at math. Verse 22, no, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. 490 times. That's more than there are days in a year. He's saying, it's, it's, Our hearts have to be to push forgiveness, to be people of forgiveness every single day plus more. People are going to hurt us really deep. Are we willing to extend the same forgiveness that Jesus showed you? Am I willing to share the same forgiveness that God showed me as Jesus was on the cross saying, forgive them? Am I willing to pray the same prayer? Again, Jesus experienced abandonment, right? He experienced betrayal, He experienced all of these things, pain and all of it, yet his prayer was still forgive them. Now I want to go through quickly what forgiveness is, and then I want to share quickly what forgiveness is not. So forgiveness is a process. 
I think for a lot of us, forgiveness is a process. A lot of us, we've gone through horrific things. We've gone through things that are really hard. And we're still dealing with the forgiveness of that. I'm not saying that forgiveness is, isn't going to take some time. I think sometimes it takes decades to get to a place of deep forgiveness for somebody who really, really hurt us. Because often forgiveness, it doesn't happen in a moment. It can happen in a moment, of course, but depending on how hurt you are, it can take a long time for, to forgive them. It might require some counseling. It might require to go. It might require lots of tears and lots of anger. You know, forgiveness is hard. But I'm not gonna be like, forgiveness is easy. Now, I don't need to go into my story with forgiveness, but I can tell you that there's been a lot of sometimes blood <laughs> when it comes to forgiveness in my life. A lot of crying, a lot of tears, a lot of anger, a lot of disappointment, a lot of regret. It's not easy, forgiveness. I think that's why we don't like to do it because it's not easy, it's painful often. Because forgiveness is letting go and going forward. It isn't easy. We know this because some of us, we've been holding grudges against people for so many years and it's still eating us up on the inside. The things they said to us, the things they did to us, they're still bombarding our minds and our thoughts. You know, in Romans 12 too, it says this, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but this part, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You know, God transforms the way we think. He transforms the way our minds go. That's how he creates something new inside of us. Because some of the things that have happened to us in our life are inexcusable. Some of the things that have happened in our life are inexcusable. There's no need for it. There's no point in having these things in our life, yet they still exist. They still happen to us, and we cannot change the past. Forgiveness is hard. And then the last one forgiveness is, is forgiveness is for you. It's not for them. When we forgive somebody, it's not for them. It's for us. Because I think a lot of the time when we're in a place of unforgiveness, what we think is that we're actually proving to them or telling them that what they did was wrong by not forgiving them for it. So we think that if I don't forgive them, I'm going to hold them hostage. I'm going to make sure that they feel bad. But the reality is the only person who's actually held in the chains is you. The only person held in the bondage of unforgiveness is you when we don't actually step out and forgive people. It holds us captive. We need to learn that freedom from the past comes through forgiveness. We need to let go and release the chains and cut the chains holding us down from moving on and going forward. When we forgive, we aren't saying that what you did is okay. We are saying that I'm not gonna let it control me anymore. The things that have happened to you again are inexcusable. Now I wanna quickly tell you what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not forgetting. You know, there's this kind of saying, we say like forgive and forget, right? I've tried that a lot, but it's hard to forget. It's hard to forget. It's hard to step into a place and it's not gonna be forgetting. If someone is in, abu if you're being abused in a relationship and you're in a place where you're unsafe, it's probably time for you to leave and maybe not forget so that we don't end up in the same cycle. You know, forgiveness is not forgetting. We can forgive and we can move on. We don't have to hold the memories of our sin and let them hold us captive, but we might not forget exactly what happened to us. It might take some time to find desperate and real healing from abuse and things in our past and trauma. You might not forget. We cannot erase the past, but forgiveness, forgiveness allows us to look back on the past with compassion. It allows us to look back on the past with compassion for us. We cannot erase it. You know, forgiveness isn't excusing. There's a lot of behavior and things that happen to us that is inexcusable. There's no, again, you don't deserve it. Excusing language sometimes is, oh, it's all right. It was nothing. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm learning as a parent that I'm trying to teach Jane to apologize. That even when I apologize to her, when she apologizes, I don't say, it's okay. I don't say, don't worry about it. I say, I forgive you. Because the way that people have treated us might not be okay and it's inexcusable. But we have to, have to get to a place where we say, we don't say, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We say, I forgive you. I forgive you. 
We're trying to teach you that bad behavior is not okay. Sin is not okay. But we can be quick, that we can be quick to forgive even when we understand the behavior we show is horrible. Causing pain to other people. That's what we're trying to teach Jane. Those are two things that forgiveness is not. I think sometimes we, we believe that because we forgive somebody, we have to put up with being treated poorly. That's not the reality. If you're being treated poorly, forgive and run away. If someone's abusing you or hurting you, leave. Get away from it. And then find the healing you desperately need. That's what forgiveness isn't. And if I were to guess, I think for all of us, we probably have somebody in our life that we need to forgive right now. I think for all of us, we probably have somebody in our life, whether it was recent or whether it was a long time ago, that we're still holding on to the pain, we're still holding on to it, and we're not willing to give it to God. We're not willing to step and say, I forgive you. I think we all have maybe somebody in our life like that. Somebody who cut you deep and left you wounded. And that wound might be still open today. It might be starting to heal, and then you're picking at it, and then it's opening again, and then you're picking at it. That's what I do. It's a true story. I was... I was working, and I thought, oh, I need to pick this off. And then, this is getting gruesome. It's like a geyser. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It was, it was gross, okay? <laughs> but that's what we do. We go back to it. We say, no, I need, we keep picking at it, and it keeps getting healing and then stopping and healing and stopping. And I think we need to get to a place where we're actually willing to forgive once and for all to leave it at the cross. We can let God renew our minds. You know one of the hardest things for us to do as humans is forgive? Do you know one of the most things that brings the most freedom in our life when it comes to relationships is, is learning how to forgive each other? You know, forgiveness, I think a lot of us, we don't want to forgive, so what do we do? We, just, we literally just run away from the pain and we pretend it's not there. We have to learn how to close the gap from it being the hardest thing and the most freeing thing we can do. Some of us, we, we are living in bondage from the past based on the pain people have caused us and it's really causing a lot of problems in our lives. We can't get to a place where we forgive. Right? The pain is too much. The trauma is too much and Again, it's inexcusable, but I think if we want to fully be free, if we want to learn how to have deeper and more real relationships, we have to learn how to forgive each other. You know, I want you to think about someone in your life maybe that you need to forgive today. Maybe it's something that you've been holding on to for a decade. Maybe it's been a couple months. Maybe it's been a couple minutes. I think it's time to let it go. I think the last question I want to answer today is how do I know if I've forgiven somebody? That's a big question, right? Like how do you know, right? How do I know that I've forgiven you? And I think some things that we can kind of ask is when I think about that person, am I th still thinking about the ways that I can get revenge, right? We pretend we don't do this, but we really do. We're like, we like to sabotage other people when they've hurt us. It's just what we do. Another way that we can maybe ask a question we can ask if I've forgiven this person is if they were to ask me to help them move, would I be willing to go? They're like, no, my back, right? <laughs> I'm getting old, you know. Would I be willing to help them if they're in need? If they needed a meal, would I be willing to cook them a meal? This one, I think, is the hardest. Could you pray for them? And not pray that God will bring down fire from heaven over them, but can you pray God bless them? God forgive them? Can we pray that? And then the last question I think we can ask, ask if I've forgiven this person is, are you constantly hoping and wishing that they will fail? Or watching, right? Ha <laughs> you failed, right? Like those fail videos you watch. It's like the most painful things you'll ever see. But that's how we know if we've forgiven somebody, I think, at least for me. But I think all of us are gonna have somebody maybe in our life that we, could, that we need to forgive. And forgiveness doesn't mean calling them. It doesn't mean this it it means really having a place in your heart we say i forgive them i think for a lot of us the people that have hurt us the most aren't alive anymore and so we can't you know have a conversation with them and say hey i forgive you right we have to get to a place in our heart 
where we can find forgiveness. And that's just our takeaway today. It's super simple is, who do I need to forgive this week? Who is it that's hurt me that I need to learn to forgive? Who is it that I need to learn to forgive in my life? And I truly want to, I truly believe and I, that forgiveness will set you free. I, th- I truly believe it will because it has for me. You can just live in a place with so much more peace and so much more joy and deeper relationships and forgiveness reigns in your marriage and reigns in your parenting and reigns in your, you know, with your parents and with your friends. When forgiveness reigns, we're gonna have deeper and more real relationships. So I just wanna pray for us when it comes to this because I think sometimes this might be one of the hardest prayers for us to pray is forgive us as I forgive. Because what that does is it puts the onus on us of saying, okay, I need to step out and I need to learn how to forgive better. So Father, that's our prayer today. We say forgive us as we forgive those who have hurt us, who've trespassed against us. God, I thank you that you're leading us into a place where we will walk in deep forgiveness for each other. God, that all the things that have happened to us, God, I thank you that um, you're bringing um, healing to our trauma. You're bringing healing to our pain. You're bringing healing to our past. And help us walk with an excitement for the future rather than a regret of our past. Help us forgive and help us learn to accept your forgiveness as well. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.